the song Escúchame, which is the first song on the record, um, was actually inspired by my mother. There's a certain line in the song that she always says to me. Um, it goes, baby, don't make the same mistakes. My mother always says that to me. She's always like, baby, just let me listen to me and let me tell you what to do. She said, I don't want you to make the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so don't make the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's, that song is totally inspired by her. Mm -hmm. But the song is very much, um, it's very much a song that I, I was trying to talk to and reach the people um, that are always telling me, you know, I want to be in the same business you want, and, and I want to be like you when I grow up. And um, I, tr I took it from that standpoint, and, and I actually wrote on this song with Mark Hyreman, my producer. And we did it from the standpoint of saying, okay, listen, you need to listen to me because I've been there before. You know, I, I know what I'm talking about. And if someone had said something to me, I probably wouldn't have made very many mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the standpoint we took it from, but it's really inspired by my mother. <laughs> Crystal Clear mm -hmm. is the title track of the record. And um, Crystal Clear actually is my favorite song on the record. And I had to fight for that song on the record because everyone wanted to kick it off. Huh? Which was kind of sick <laughs> and demented. But, um, but I, I fell in love with the song. And, and it's truly my love song for Christ and and I wanted the whole record the whole base of the record you know I had so many people questioning my walk with God after doing the pop Latin thing you know supposedly quote unquote um, I had so many people questioning you know are you still you know a Christian artist uh, you know are you signed with Sony discos and solely with them now you know and I was like you know what I want to make it completely crystal clear to people that I am a Christian I'm very, very, um, very proud of my walk with God, and I, I just want to make it clear to everybody that I am still the same. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm probably, the only thing that I can think is that being involved in the secular market has only made me closer in my walk with God. Mm -hmm. It's made me closer and stronger mm -hmm. in my walk with God, because if I'm not, you know, if I'm not a light, who is going to be one? Every time I fall is probably the most kind of up tune on the record. It's uh, one of those that you can dance to, you can listen to in the car and just jam to. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very true to my relationship with God and, you know, how you just fall more in love with God. The more you know, the more you learn about Him and how you just, you just can't stop. But you can't help but fall in love with Him. He loves you in spite of you. <laughs> This song, you know, we think of God and Christ all the time as being, you know, out, out like too far for us to ever reach. You know, he's way out in the world of, of a place we can't see, hear, feel, or touch. You know, we just have to believe it's there. And uh, we always think of him that way. You know, so many, so many people see him as being, you know, unreachable. When that's not true, the song goes, you're not there, way out there, wandering in your great unknown. You know, you are here, ever near to me. And that's true. We think that he's out there, but he's not there, out there. He's here with us, close, uh, sensing everything and, and, and just moving in us all the time. And uh, I mean, it's the greatest love story of all time right there. Adore is like a song that was written by Brent Bourgeois and Chris Eaton and produced by Mark Hyman. Um, and this, this song is, is a reflection of how much you love, adore, and praise, and how close you want to be actually to who Jesus is and who you are through Him. And, um, and that's what, you know, I, I tried to have every song like that. Um, but this song is probably the core of what it is. You know, as a girl, I tend to romanticize the world, you know. I sit there and watch people and I'll look at them and go, oh, I know what happened with them. He really loves her, but she doesn't see it. She doesn't know it. You know, I just romanticize the world and dramatize and everything's tragic. And, um, and I wanted, I actually asked Chrissy and who wrote the song to write me a song about about a savior, someone who saves you and, and just rescues you, like, like an old 
um, romantic, um, you know, movie from the Renaissance era. You know, all that, you know, medieval romance. And I wanted a song like that. And he wrote me a song. He's my savior. And it's about God coming and saving us and, and just that, um, that fullness that you feel and the romance that you have. As Christians, we tend to have this concept that, you know, I'm going to do this right here and there and, and no one will see. You know, no one will ever know that I lied. No one will ever know that I, you know, I did this or that. And that's so untrue. You know, God does not miss a thing. He sees everything, hears everything, knows everything. And, um, and it's, we thought it would be a really cool approach uh, to, to your, you know, to the forgiveness that you have to seek all the time. And, uh, and it was. It was a cool approach. But you don't miss a thing I do. You see every move I make. It's a modern-day sting song, every breath you take. <laughs> Imagine Me Without You is, um, it's like a, Rudy Perez actually produced this uh -huh. and wrote this, and, um, and it's like, it's like pulling yourself out of the situation and going, you know, I can't imagine me without you here in my life. You know, I can't imagine who I would be or where I would be or what I would do. You know, I mean, and that's so true. I mean, where would we be? I would definitely not be here today. I wouldn't have the air to breathe. Um, and, and I know for a fact that I don't want to live a day without him in my life. I don't want to know what it's like to not be able to feel his presence. You know, um, in, in the book of, um, gosh, is it 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel? I can't remember, but... Um, you know, when Saul was king, when God appointed him king of the Israelites, he, you know, he's like, okay, you're gonna, you obey everything I tell you, obey my commandments, and, and I'll tell you how, to, you know, how to rule Israel and really be a thriving country, a thriving, you know, kingdom. And, um, and so Saul went out and, and, you know, he was following all God's, you know, he was obeying him and, and listening to every word he said. And, um, and there came a point where he was actually disobeying what God was doing. He was going into battle going, yeah, I know God told me to kill everybody and not take everything, but what would this hurt? They don't need it anymore. And he was slowly but surely disobeying God. Slowly, slowly but surely God was taking his hand off of him and was speaking less and less to him. And he could actually hear God. like It was an audible voice. He heard God audibly speaking to him, telling him what to do in battle. And... Um, and there was so bad, it came to a point where he could no longer hear or feel the presence of God anymore. The only way he could do that was, um, was he would ask David, call David to come and sing and play the harp for him. And David would come and sing and play. And um, Saul, that was the only way. That, it came to a point, the only way he could actually feel the presence of God. And I couldn't imagine being in that place, never being able to feel the presence of God again. When you know what it's like to hear the actual audible voice of what God wants you to do, how to be in His will, and to have Him love on you in that way, and to just not be able to hear anything, feel anything, sense anything. That would be the saddest thing in the world. I, couldn't, I could never even imagine that. But, um, but... I think that's what Imagine Me Without You, to me, is. It's that as long as, as, long as you allow me to, I, I couldn't imagine my life without you. It's ministry-oriented. It's, it's, it's reaching out to the unchurched, you know, saying, challenging them, going, come as you are, don't change a thing. Open your heart, because Christ, that's all he wants. He just wants your heart. You don't have to try to change yourself before you can, before you can be in the presence of God. Just go and just come as you are. And it's kind of that um, altar call type song, challenging people. Center of Your Love, I kind of consider, it's one of the more fun songs on the record. Um, 
It's a song that was I actually sang with uh, Pete Stewart, who was uh, the guy from Grammar Train. He's really, you know, he's extremely talented. And Michael Tate did uh, backing vocals on it. Um, it was just such a fun song to sing because it was something. It was more attitude, and I'd never done that before. You know, Show You Love was a little bit, but this went to the tenth power, and I was kind of like, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> you know, at first when we heard the song. Um, it was kind of like, well, we didn't really, we, were, we dug it, but we didn't completely dig it. Then they rewrote some stuff on it, and I was like floored. Because I just thought it was so much fun, the message that it brought to life. It brought to life how, you know, how if you've ever been in the dark, you know that to be in the light, you know, you, there's no better place to be. Because if you know what it's like to not be in the presence of God, you know for a fact you never want to be back in that place again. Just a Prayer Away um, was written by Rudy Perez and produced by Rudy Perez. Um, again, you know, we consider God so far that we can't just talk to Him. And in reality, you know, all you have to do is, again, like, like on my knees, you know, it makes it come to life the fact that you don't have to be just, you can't, it doesn't have to be a uniform thing. You can just be wherever you are, call out His name, He's there. He's just a prayer away. If I believe in something, I'll go for it. But I don't believe in I don't believe in just anything. Spiritually it was really good for me because I had to figure out why I wanted to do Latin. Work. Was I doing it because I wanted to be a superstar? No. Was I doing it because I wanted to be the next whatever? No. I don't want to do this because of that. It has to be because this is where God wants me. I have to please God. I mean, that's, if this is what God has put in me, and if this is what His mission for me is, it's more important that I please Him than to please man. I was five years old. I became a Christian when I was five. Mm -hmm. And um, I was actually at a camp crusade when I was five years old, and they were asking people to come, to, the, to come and accept Christ. And I was like, well, you know, I was born into a Christian family, but I haven't done it, so I'll go up and accept Christ. And it's literally been, you know, in the past couple of years, honestly, that my relationship with God has been like mine. You know, and I, I think it's a growing up thing because, you know, I, I consider myself, I like to think of myself as trying to be as close to what David was like. Because he messed up so many times, but he was a man after God's own heart. And that's what I'm striving for right now in my walk with God. And that's not easy. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Not at all. Um, I really believe the Latin word is my ministry. It is my ministry. Because you're reaching people that have no idea who Jesus Christ is supposed to be. You know, you're reaching people that think Christianity is, you know, a television station. No, it's about it's about a relationship with God. I talk to God because I feel like He's the one person in the world that I can talk to that, that really understands. <laughs> 